Hi, friends. Host Eric here, host of Talking with Finish. You know what time of the month it is. It's that time of the month when Eric starts ranting about evolution. Yes, that's right. Evolution makes absolutely no sense. I mean, it makes no sense at all. None. And the fact that people insist on defending evolution is it's as mindless and senseless as this COVID response. You know that Newsom just closed the bars here in California. Not that I care, I don't go to bars, but hey, Octavia Silva, guess who went to the post office today? It wasn't me. It was Rachel. Yep. And guess what she did there? She said hi to the postman, and she came home. Oh, wait, no, she mailed something. Yeah, Darwin, you may have just, you may have seen the video I just put up. Stephen Jay Gould is a very famous paleontologist who who authored the uh, who authored the most used textbook on evolution that talks about punctuated equilibrium and how punctuated equilibrium explains why evolution makes no sense. Except that's been debunked now. And punctuated equilibrium has now been debunked, and now they're left back with nothing. They have no explanation anymore. You know, it's like the problem for evolutionary scientists is. When they apply science, all they can do is negate part of their whole theory. That's what the science does every time you use it. And so they keep they keep trying to do these concentric circle explanations that don't work. And they're ultimately going to have to just say, okay, you know what? Let's stop these whole evolutionary conference, evolutionary science conferences and stuff, and let's listen to Eric. He's right about everything. He knows. That's what they should do. Obviously, the um, evolutionary scientists have not been using their brains to make decisions. They've been using their faith in other people. So if they're going to have faith in somebody else. Well, but they're an evolutionary scientist. They must know better than you, Eric. No, I was right. It's like just because I can think properly. You don't have to be some sort of expert on genetics to know that evolution makes no sense. You just have to be good at at determining which arguments are bullshit. And I'm the best at that. So when I tell people a long time ago, years ago, you know, evolution is bullshit, right? <laughs> and everybody freaks out. Well, it can't possibly be. What are you, some sort of creationist? <laughs> well, just wait. Just wait and watch Google News. Look at the, look at the news reports. And what you'll see, invariably about all these issues that people disagree with me on is that Eric is right and everybody else is wrong. I love things where I'm one of the only right people and everybody else is wrong. I love those things. Because, of course, time always proves me right. And then I can say, I told you so. And punctuated equilibrium makes absolutely no sense. Never did make any sense. Yet so many people, a whole world's worth of people, worth of intelligent people, all advocated that. Is this the same as the psychologists and the theory on why the MBTI community is wrong? The MBTI community is correct. I mean, not the MBTI community, but I'm correct about MBTI stuff. Um, this is the exact opposite of that. Evolutionary science is a bunch of science theater that is... Um, I did too, Ethan McDonald. I did too. I, I pulled an all-nighter as well. And I slept all day. Um... The thing is, it's like, it's science theater. People doing a bunch of experiments about genetics and then just assuming the evolutionary processes that they want to assume without ever challenging the fundamental model of it. I mean, what we all know, and this is the thing that somehow everybody forgets when they're talking about evolution, that the definition of a species is a self-replicating genome. And every instance we've ever had about it Every example we've ever seen has all proved that, that species come out the same. That, you know, wolves have been wolves for all of human history. Yes, we successfully domesticated some dogs, but we still didn't make a new species. 
Yeah, no, they can still kill people. Yeah, like, it's more than that, Rachel. A chihuahua can still mate with a wolf and produce reproductively viable offspring. That's so weird. Yes, it's true. It doesn't matter how much we no, pressure their right. genetics to make them different. They're still the same species. Mm -hmm. Zalen Black, you pulled an all-nighter as, as well. Ethan McDonald, the reason... Thanks, Jake Herbert's on the title praise. Uh, the reason um, I pulled an all-nighter in part was because uh, the night before, I slept really well. I took a couple of Tylenol PMs. I took uh, or something, a little something else, too. Quarter of a Kalani. Quarter of a Kalani. That's right. See, uh, it's a point five. What, yeah, when I am when I really want to go to sleep, I hit up really <laughs> a, a quarter of one of the Klonfins that she takes every night. Just a quarter of it. And I sleep really well, and it's, I don't feel locked out or anything. But That's I just good. feel I just feel like I sleep really well. And I sleep in, and when I wake up, I'm really well rested. So um, Octavia Silva, that sounds pretty good. Scrambled eggs with gouda cheese. Mmm, does sound good. But uh, you know, it's funny. Rachel was just telling me the other night how uh, she's not really a big egg person. I'm not. I'm not really a big egg person either. Although I will eat breakfast sandwiches at fast food places. Yeah, and like the one that uh, Delilah made that you taught her, delicious. Like fucking love breakfast egg sandwiches are delicious. But but I'm not like on a plate. Like I'm not a huge yeah, egg just, person. Yeah, I'm just not a huge yeah. egg person. <laughs> Good grief and a 12 pound cake and diet ice cream. <laughs> Evolutionary science is an oxymoron. It's science oh. theater. It's a bunch of, of doing work on genetics and then just making the leap to claim that this applies to evolution, the basic claims of evolution, which make no sense at all. Because, as I've said many times before, and I will repeat again, if any of the mechanisms of evolution were correct, we'd see increased genetic diversity with increased population size of the species. I mean, the thing about socionics, Ethan McDonald, the main problem with socionics is that, um, is that it, it doesn't differentiate between the different things that it's attempting to do. So in other words, it doesn't say, this is a process analysis, and this is a uh, behavior description, and this is a meow, and evaluate those kinds of arguments accordingly. So certain kinds of arguments can be used as legitimate warrants for certain kinds of conclusions, and certain kinds of warrants cannot be used as legitimate conclusions for so legitimate warrants for certain kinds of conclusions. So um, what I try to do is do all the the proper meta analysis regarding um, cognitive functions, which is to say, what is this thing we're talking about? What is it for? Um, except here's the problem: email anthrax for any medium to large size population, epigenetics can't possibly alter the genome nearly as much as needs to be altered in order for a species to actually evolve. Um, you know, epigenetics is, is subject to the same kind of limits as genetic drift. People also suggest that genetic drift was responsible for evolution, but there's a population barrier of about 100. Epigenetics, the population barrier isn't, is mathematically hard, but it simply follows naturally that if you have only if you have an extremely isolated population that suffers the same epigenetic changes across the board could you just could you explain changes to the genome uh, across the for for the species as a whole so it, it just doesn't make any sense and most importantly remember we've had tens of thousands of years to see species not changing at all which is why punctuated equilibrium was the theory that was the theory you probably thought was the was explained evolution yesterday, email that fact. Now, neither of them succeed. Punctuated equilibrium makes no sense. Why is it that species suddenly turn on, evolve really fast, and then turn off evolutionary processes? Why would that be? There's no explanation for it. It's just an arbitrary claim. What the most popular, this article I just uh, shared with everybody, the most popular textbook example of punctuated equilibrium has been debunked by researchers. I'll share it here. It explains how, basically, there's no evidence at all for punctuated equilibrium, and there's no reason to conclude punctuated equilibrium is actual. These are gradualists. Unfortunately for the gradualists, 
there are too many extinction events to possibly sustain gradualism. So, you know, this is, these are some of the reasons why I've explained so many times in the past that we don't need to be rocket scientists to tell that evolution is bullshit. It's just obviously bullshit. It makes no sense. Remember, a species is defined as a self-replicating genome. It's designed with with mechanisms in place to squash out deviation from that genome. Left alone, every genome returns to its mean. If we were to stop breeding dogs and just let them all run loose, they would eventually return to something kind of proto-dog wolf looking thing. You know? Because that's what actually happens when we test these ideas. When we test these ideas, we discover that they're bullshit. When we try to Change when we try to speciate by by breeding, we discover we can't. They do adapt within the genome, and lots of genomes have varying degrees of er elasticity. No, nobody tries to speciate exactly. That's the other problem with evolution. It mistakenly affords agency to genes which have none. Absolutely. It's a natural process of adaptation. What we see is no matter how much selective pressure we put on a genome, it never speciates. We put way more selective pressure on dogs than that nature ever could. Right, Ethan? But we can't speciate them. Can't speciate them from wolves. People try to speciate other species. Ethan, that's the case. So the thing is, I'm, I've thought a lot about this. I've, I've read through all of the arguments, and I'm right, 100% right. Nobody can beat me on this. Nobody's even come close to answering any of my questions. No, it doesn't, Ethan McDonald. That's not true. Listen, remember, within a few million years, we went from, like, corals and stuff to human beings. Explain, me, explain to me the process by which a... A tree that lives a thousand years evolves from a little moss um, in a thousand generations. We can test the speciation, 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 speciatability of various species by focusing on ones with very short lifespans, like fruit flies, for example. Fruit flies have been very useful in explaining to us how genetics work and how adaptation within the genome works and how also you can't speciate them. They do with dogs what they do with dogs. No, no. The point is dogs prove me correct, email anthrax. We can adapt a genome immensely, right? And yet we can't speciate them. Even though chihuahuas, we've adapted them as much as we possibly could, they can still produce genetically, reproductively viable offspring. Well, look, Ethan McDonald, you've not explained to me how evolution works. Explain to me how evolution works, then. You have no idea. You're just claiming it's true because you have faith in the, in the face of contrary evidence. Explain to me how it works. Because we do know that each species, there are individuals in that species, and each of those individuals mates with another individual of the same species and produces another member of the same species. That there are no positive mutations, that all negative mutations are almost entirely deleterious and kill. What changes over time, Ethan McDonald? Individuals don't, and each individual is a member of their species. I'm the same exact kind of human as humans were. No, they adapt. A given populations of a species will adapt within the elasticity of a genome. That's true. Nobody's disputing that. And return to the genetic mean when the pressure re uh, recedes. We can show that with the uh, moss, the, the moss that went from white to black and, and back again. That's, you're, you're begging the question, Ethan McGonnell. That's the fundamental question. Are species traits adaptation to changing environments? No, there's no reason to think that. In fact, we can see that with enough of a change to the environment, species, instead of adapting, go extinct. And that adaptation to, to selective pressures does not change the genome. We've proved that. 
We've proved that many times over. That's not how it works. No evolutionists think it works like that. Ethan McDonald, that's old, old version of evolution that nobody ascribes to anymore. Nobody thinks evolution is about sexual selection from the fittest. Nobody. No sane evolutionary scientist thinks that. <laughs> no, all, all G deviations from the genetic norm get lost because they're all disadvantageous. There are no positive mutations. That's where the nearly neutral theory of evolution came in. However, it's invalidated by the genetic drift barrier. There is negative selection to return a species back to the genetic mean. In other words, the reason why why children aren't, you know, half the time born with an extra finger or an extra ear or something like that is because all such mutations that deviate from the genetic mean are deleterious and most of them will kill the individual. I mean, evolution exists as a, as a bunch of puffery and nonsense. It doesn't answer anything. It doesn't explain anything. Genetic norms don't change between populations. That, that, it doesn't work like that, though. That's the claim, Ethan McDonald, but it doesn't actually work like that. In order to have that happen, you have to have a series of impossible bottlenecks, impossible bottlenecks, founders affect isolation of two individuals and have both of them be genetically mutated even though there are no positive genetic mutations. It makes no sense. You're not arguing any of the points I'm making either. Because they're the same species, Ethan. That's the point. Because they're different species. That's how we define species. That's why race is such bullshit, in part. No, I don't want to take him to a room and debate him over the live stream. I, my, the point is, I I actually don't even necessarily want to talk in, a, in a, how do species diverge in the first place? From what? Diverge from what? Diverge from what? You're begging the question again. We don't know where species came from. That's the answer. We don't know. I don't need to have an alternate affirmation to point out that this affirmation is bullshit. It's like, you might say, um, rain comes um, because uh, leaves and uh, trees spit water up into the air, and that's where it falls from. Okay, you could make that explanation. Even if I don't know where rain came from, I can tell you for sure that's bullshit. Okay? And we can agree on that. Do you hear me, Ethan? So just because I don't have a counter advocacy doesn't mean we can't agree that your advocacy is bullshit. Anyway, um, I don't really, I, you know, it's like I, I've been in a fussy mood today. I slept all day. Uh, Pete's harassing me for, for treats. Hi, Peter. What do I look like? A restaurant? Thank you, Peacock Chief. You are so spoiled at this point. He's like, hey, 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 yesterday you gave me cheddar cheese. What's up with these crackers? Yes. Yeah, you don't like it, you can find your own goddamn food. I'm tired of you being so pushy. The 
the fossil record shows a sudden, what's called the Cambrian explosion, a sudden emergence of almost all species all together at one time. Okay. Um, it does seem to show a branching pattern, but that's not a good reason to conclude that they that evolution existed. We still have to explain the mechanism. If we can't explain it, then we just remain with, we don't know what the explanation is. But see, listen, Ethan, no, I'm not making that advocacy. Just because you're wrong, you can't assume that I'm arguing something else, right? Just because you're wrong that this is a dollar, it doesn't mean that I'm advocating that it's a sheep, okay? I'm not saying where species came from. I don't know. What I'm putting pointing out is that is that um, evolution doesn't explain anything. See what I'm saying? For the sake of argument, but we're disagreeing with each other. We're not agreeing. I, you're saying I have an explanation. I'm saying no, you don't. No, that's that's not true. Uh, there's there's a three prong pillar for truth, Ethan. Gone that goes like this. One reference to objective data. Two consensus about what words mean. That's an important one. And three intentionality. So what you're doing now is dissembling. It's called dissembling. If you wish to try to communicate, the communication is impossible. You are inherently self defeating because if you succeed, you prove yourself false. And that's what you're trying to do. If words have no inherent meaning, then we shouldn't listen to you anymore. Because you're making that claim, it applies to you. I'm not making that claim, it doesn't apply to me. So your words definitely do have no meaning because I agree with you about your words having no meaning. However, my words do have meaning. So we shouldn't listen to you anymore and we should listen to me. That's not subjective. Consensus is not subjective. It's it's not physically concrete. That doesn't make it subjective. Right? I mean, in English, this is called a lighter. Is it an arbitrary term? Well, sure, we could have called it something else, but we call it a lot a lighter. It's not terrible logic at all. What are you talking about? Consensus is not subjective. What, what you're trying to say is that consensus is not deductively certain. You're right, but that doesn't make it subjective. Hi. Thank you. Wow, cool. Cheesecake. Your aisle brought it, so... Oh, okay. Cool, thanks. No, he's the one who's making the claim that his words have no meaning. He said, words have no meaning. So I, I say, okay, I accept your claim. I assent to your claim on your side of the flow, not on mine. You're saying, for your, for your stuff anyway, words have no meaning because you're the one who's operating under that frame. I disagree with that claim in general, but since you agree with it, it must be true of your words. After all, you're the one making the claim, and I can agree to it for the sake of argument. Okay, well, you don't have to accept it, but that's the difference between communicative progress and personal feelings. I see, and what's the mechanism by which that occurs, Winston's mom? What's the mechanism? Well, I mean, Ethan McDonald, meaning is a function of agency. It's a function of human existence. Nothing has any meaning except the meaning we ascribe to it. If I got together with others and said pine ones were valuable, pine cones were valuable and were money, we could treat it as such, but it wouldn't be currency. Well, see, that's the thing. That's not, a pine cone is not a word. A pine cone is a thing, okay? Objects are different than words. Words represent things, either concepts or objects or, but see, nobody thinks that, Winston's mom. There are no positive uh, mutations. There are only deleterious mutations, which is 
The only way, which means the only way you can possibly argue a natural selection mechanism is through genetic drift. We've already eliminated that possibility. It's been just proved out a couple of different ways that the genetic drift could be responsible for it. So you have to posit some, given the fossil record, you have to posit some sort of punctuated equilibrium or something like it, but that's just been debunked. So, you know, sorry, it doesn't work like that. There is no, the natural selection, what natural selection does, it's a real process. It always pushes the species back to the genetic mean. It eliminates deviance from the genetic mean. It's the opposite of evolution. It's constant, constancy institution. Now, the fact is, any given genome is not entirely robust and healthy. Epigenetics account for gradual decay of the health of a genome in a species to the extent that they enter the genetic um, population of the species broadly, okay? They certainly don't account for speciation, but they do explain how a given species genome may weaken over a long enough period of time, maybe a billion years or something, before it, it decays kind of into an unhealthy state of genetics because it is true that there are, are some deleterious mutations that enter the genome and cause a genetic, the, the health of a species, so to speak, the genetic health of a species to weaken over time. But that's very long time. So... It's like um, the human genome will not weaken and cease to be an effective genome for probably a billion years or something. Maybe, maybe 10 million years. Remember, we're a very young species, right? We just came into existence abruptly, bam, um, at the Cambrian, Cambrian period, post-Cambrian. So... No, that's begging the question, Winston's mom. They appear to represent adaptations to niches. That doesn't mean we can conclude that they adapted to niches. So, for example, this house has a very slanty roof like this, right? We can't conclude that the house grew that way because it's very snowy there and the snow needs to slide off. It's possible that somebody purposely made it that way, for example. There's no reason to conclude that as we dig down and we see architectural forms from before, simpler houses and more complex houses, you conclude that houses simply evolved on their own. No reason to conclude that. So we, we have to make we have to be clean in our thinking, or else we'll make mistakes like that. We can't beg the question and prove evolution that way. The fact is, I've thought about this long, long, long and hard. Before I start making arguments about this generally held consensus is wrong, I've thought about it a lot, and I've done a lot of research, and I've read a lot about it. The fact is, nobody has ever had any answers to any of my questions, including an actual evolutionary scientist that I talked to who was left down to saying, there are rhythms. What? Come on. The last shore-dwelling ancestor of modern whales was Sinox, top left. I see. Okay, so um, but it was about 60 million years ago that the last extinction event happened, Winston's mom. They killed off everything large. So all creatures that are we have now evolved in 60 million years. Okay? So remember that. Almost every species we know has been exactly the same. In fact, all species we know have been exactly the same. For the entire duration of our history, in other words, pictures of, of, uh, of an African deer from 10,000 years ago on a cave wall show us it's the same species as it is today. So that's 10,000 years. Remember, 100 of those is a million years. So nothing changed in 10,000 years that we could see. Might have been very small evolution change. So let's times that by 100. Okay, now we've got the same exact deer, but with slightly shorter horns, let's say. Now we're in a million years. Now, how do you get from snails and, and moths to human beings in 60 million years? How do you get from snails and moths to a tree like the giant sequoia that lives a thousand years or more? The, the bristlecone pines. In, in mammoth that have been there for 
something like 10,000 years, how does that species evolve in 60 million years from moss? Oh my word. What possible mechanism are you saying accounts for this insanity? You have none. Saying names of species and using the expression 60 million years ago is not an argument for evolution. Several transitional forms evolve. And imagine what it would take for a whale to evolve from a hippo or back and forth. How many changes there has to be to get from lungs to, um, to gills. Look at the time frame, look at the lifespan, look at the generation length, and tell me, how is it that fruit flies evolved and say fruit flies 60 million years ago, and also giant sequoias evolved? Mosses evolved 60 million years ago and stayed mosses, but from them also evolved giant sequoias that live a thousand years in 60 million years. How did that happen, Winston's mom? How? Explain that. Well, the answer has to be punctuated equilibrium. The only explanation based on the fossil record that we have is that almost always species stay the same. Then abruptly, there's a big burst of super fast evolution for no reason. And then everybody stops and resumes being the same species the whole time. The fossil record's clear. Species remain the same over time. Individuals the same species. If you ask an evolutionary scientist, well, what's the definition of a species? He'd say, well, if, if we found a chihuahua head in the, in the forest and didn't know what it was, we certainly wouldn't say it was the same species as a, as a wolf. Well, why not? Well, it looks different. But that's not the meaningful definition of species. It's reproductively viable offspring. We have a definition. Oh, we've gotten rid of that definition. Why? Well, because of that definition, it disproves evolution. So, so what are you trying to argue then, evolutionists? Nothing. They're trying to avoid explaining anything. And that's the truth of the matter. When, what changed depending on time? The speed of evolution? What's the mechanism of it? It's not natural selection. It's not genetic drift. It's not punctuated equilibrium. What's the mechanism of it? What we know is it's definitely not natural selection. Because if it were, then population size would be correlative with population genetic diversity. It's not the case. Pigeons, of which there are billions all over the world, are not any more genetically diverse a species than California condors, of which there's like 20 or something. Why is that? If natural selection has anything to do with evolution, why is it that there are Billions and trillions of ants all over the world, and they're not speciating in new populations. Why are there trillions of leafcutter ants? And every single new leafcutter ant is another leafcutter ant, and not some variation on it. Think. Use your brains. I mean... Again, begging the question, email the answer asks, what about divergent evolution? Just because two species are similar in far away different places does not prove evolution. You're begging the question. It's saying, if there were evolution, we have to explain this similarity by saying they, they divergently emerge separately in different places. That's a stupid, terrible argument. Modifications of population by natural selection where some traits are favored in the environment or others. Except that's not the case, though. What's his mom? It's not the case. We do see populations adapting within a genome. We never see, despite the fact that there are trillions of ants in all kinds of different environments, we never see them evolve into a new form of ant, even though they have a very quick lifespan. Remember, um, different species, if in fact any of the mechanisms that understood were correct, would be evolving at different rates. In other words, the more complex a species is, the slower the evolution, because the slower the generational turnover, right? But it's not the case. It's not the case that bugs are evolving way faster than human beings. All right, Ethan? So if evolution were real, ants would be changing all the time. 
and fire and fruit fly would be changing all the time. But complicated species would mostly remain the same. But that's not what we see at all. We see nothing like that. They can adapt in vastly different ways. There's papyruses. They can live in dry dirt or can live in water. And Interspecies evolution is false. Offspring have different genes than either of their parents. No, they have the same chromosomes as the species that they're a member of. There is genetic variation within a genome, a little bit, but um, to the extent that it varies very much, enough to make any kind of meaningful phenotypic difference, it almost always kills that individual and prevents them from and prevents them from reproducing. Even if somebody were to have an advantage of some sort genetically, imagine how much they'd have to have an advantage to make a meaningful difference in the genome. There's billions of pigeons. Let's say one pigeon is born with laser eyes. How does that come and take over the species? Maybe we don't notice adaptation in smaller species. Look, people for a long time since Mingle, I think his name was. No, is that his name? The guy who did the pea plants study for genetics, Middle Ages guy, have been trying to work with breeding to to modify species, adapt them, etc. And there is room to do that. And if you stop they revert back to the genetic mean, the species does. The individuals who are deviant too much from that, they probably can only survive under the care of people. So for example, if um, I, we might have bred a bunch of chihuahuas, but if we were to stop taking care of them, they would all die. There wouldn't be very many chihuahuas left. In that case, you'd be right. Only the strongest would survive. And then what should the strongest be? The one that was least deviant from the genetic norm. And so gradually you revert to the genetic norm. All right. Bugs stay bugs. People stay people. Elephants stay people. Elephants stay elephants. Dolphins stay dolphins. There's no indication we have for the entirety of human history of actual evolution occurring, speciation occurring, or any species moving towards speciation, which is why evolution hung its hat on punctuated equilibrium. They had to have that. If without punctuated equilibrium, the whole thing blows up. Makes no sense at all. Of course, punctuated equilibrium never made any sense. It's just a claim that abruptly evolution turns on, goes really, really fast for a short period of time, and then abruptly turns off. <laughs> elephants stay people, right? <laughs> people say grizzly bears, elephants stay people, giraffes, they don't, they don't do anything. I don't have a counter advocacy. That's the problem with this whole evolution debate in the first place is that it has been positioned for such a long time as evolution versus creationism that everybody thinks if you oppose evolution, you must be a creationist. I don't have a counter-advocacy. I'm appalled by the horrors of this terrible advocacy sustaining for such a long time in the face of obvious contrary evidence. And illogic. We have to define the species as something, and the only meaningful definition of it is a self-replicating genome. Think, you know, look at ligers, they live awful lives, they die prematurely, or they choose a lion or tiger as a species to stick to. That does sound terrible, right? Aww. It's like they're they're abominations. Every time you breed two species that aren't the same, you get this weird non reproductively viable abomination. Oh my gosh, this is just like my dream that I had about my Jagger. Remember? He, I, I, in my dream, he was just having, because he, he's only married like hot people, but he actually has like children who are ugly. Just goes to show like evolution that doesn't exist either. One of those moments, do you think we always walked upright? Is one of those crazy um, questions that makes no sense. I have not always walked upright. When I was born, I couldn't walk upright at all. You have not always walked upright. When you ask, has the species always walked upright? Yes, that's how it's defined, is bipedal humanoid. It is mixing. If, if, mixing if, does make weird stuff. 
if you have a, a, a chimpanzee, it doesn't up, walk upright because it's not a human being that walks upright. So, I mean, it's such a silly question. Well, do you think we always walked upright? We have always walk, either been born or you know, walking, sitting, lying down. The species, yeah, it's what definitely it is. We said to use little TI. That's all. I mean, we don't have any examples of humans that didn't walk upright. Except for people who are handicapped and babies. You know, you want to know about a hafu, I can get here. Boy, did the Japanese get in trouble. You know, they've got this tennis player girl who's half Japanese and half black. And uh, when they put her on the covers of the magazines in Japan, they lightened her skin and everybody threw a fit. Mm -hmm. Inherited posture merely implies that in a given species, physical qualifications are can congenitally transmitted, which facilitates a certain characteristic position of the body. Evolution of posture, therefore, has inevitably been associated with corresponding evolutionary changes in organic structures. Again, you're just begging the question. You're assuming that these changes have evolved, and then you're making claims about that, about since they've evolved, blah, 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 blah. That's begging the question. It's not an argument in favor of anything. You haven't established what the mechanism is. Before you step, if you can't establish the mechanism, you have nothing. That's not that's not an argument about evolution. Those are just evolution. That's science theater. That's evolutionary science theater. Those words. Those aren't actual arguments for anything. There's no warrant there. Things that are unwarranted are bullshit. Consistently proved to be bullshit. The COVID thing. Unwarranted. This behavior. Unwarranted. And what do we find out? Complete bullshit. Evolution. Unwarranted. It's not adequately warranted, which means people are not providing the proper kinds of arguments that would be convincing about anything. Therefore, it's bullshit, it turns out. It doesn't necessarily have to be bullshit. That would be a fallacy of a fallacy to say that just because something's fallacious or invalid that it's wrong, not necessarily. But in this case, it definitely is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Begging the questions, Winston Mom. <sighs> Seven million years ago, if there were human beings, they were just as we are now. I don't need a better mechanism. I'm not the one making the claim to explain it. That's the problem evolutionists have. They keep wanting to position it against a counter advocacy. It's not my job to provide a counter advocacy. The people who claim to explain where species come from need to actually explain it. The fact that I don't have a counter advocacy is not an argument in favor of evolution. <laughs> You're just making claims. Their, their skeletons retain some features that help them. So you're, what you're saying is there was a medium, an intermediate species between apes and humans. Fine. I don't doubt that there were species that went extinct. That doesn't mean that we evolved from them. Just because the fossil record is branching doesn't mean you can presume your mechanism. You still have to establish it, and you haven't. This is you're just you're just you're just reading science theater. By 1.8 million years ago, our ancestors. What are ancestors? You mean other human beings? After all, those are the only thing that ever gave birth to human beings. Those aren't evidence of evolution. That's evidence of other species. That did not prove that we emerged from them. You have to provide a mechanism, or you have nothing. We know natural selection is not the mechanism. We, we all evolutionary scientists agree on that. It is not. It is not sexual selection. It was until today, according to everybody, it was punctuated equilibrium that explained it. But now they've lost that. There's nothing. There's nothing in the bag anymore. Just garbage and air. That's the truth, folks. They got nothing.
I got a bag full of nothing. I, I've had this conversation so many times. Nobody has ever been able to answer any of my questions meaningfully. Nobody's been able to address any of my points meaningfully. Nobody's been able to make any good arguments to counter anything I'm saying. That proves consistently 100% of the time when that happens over time, I am so fucking right. And everybody who believes in evolution is completely wrong. And there's no other way to put it. Eric's in kind of a fiery mood. Right. So the textbook we were all taught out of, the most popular textbook on evolution that explained everything that made no sense, has been debunked. Stephen Jay Gold's theory on punctuated equilibrium has been debunked. So now they have nothing left. Okay. I don't know. I'm restless. I'm yanny. So this is like you. I don't know. This is not new. <laughs> I know. I just don't know what I want to do right now. I guess I just gonna smoke some more bong right. I'm going to too. That's what I was thinking about doing also. I probably. Running Fox, are you trying to put me in a watery grave? Oh no! Not a cold one. Running Fox says Eric needs some cold water. It might help. Might help a little bit. A splash of cold water. What's left? Genetic drift theory? Debunked. <laughs> What's left? Natural selection? Debunked. <laughs> You're so cute. What's left? A nearly neutral theory? Debunked. Oh, well, yeah, there's, there's those. But I'm not arguing those. I'm arguing, I'm negating. I'm not affirming. This is something people don't understand. They're... People come in and constantly go, well, what's your advocacy then? I go, my my advocacy right now is that you're wrong. You're the one making claims. You're the one trying to say, yeah. Thankfully, evolution gave us. He thanks evolution. Evolution is just a fill-in for God. It means the same thing. It's like, let's pretend our genes were, were making decisions. It's not the bunk entirely. It's that mathematically there's a genetic drift barrier that means it can only account for any kind of change in the genome up to a population of less than a hundred. So it uh, it certainly can't account for um, and it doesn't it doesn't work like it's not like big changes, you know. <coughs> Um, there's also a uh, a sort of a hypothesis that was made by the genetic drift people that, that, that could, you could test, and it uh, falsified it. I don't remember exactly what it was, but there's a uh, a math test on it that they they said, okay, if, if we're right about this hypothetically, then this should prove to be the case. And when they finally got people got around to testing that, uh, it their hypothesis was was disproved. <laughs> Why was God hesitant to implement his evolutionary idea? He worried it would defeat the porpoise. Ha! I heard about that. I heard that one before. <laughs> Why are you so worried about porpoises, I wonder? There are lots of creatures that would be negatively impacted by evolution. The whole world would fall apart because nothing would make any sense anymore. Everything would be changing all the time. It's like, you come back That's a couple weeks sense. later and you've got like fruit flies that are like six times bigger than they are. And when you go to swat them, they have now they've got like fangs and they're like, ah, well, and you're like, oh, shit, like, what's going on here? Isn't that like what part of like Rick and Morty tries to show? Like he's always yelling at Morty for trying to change shit. Well, I mean, Rick and Morty presumes evolution too, I assume. But the thing is, I don't know, but they're just saying. But the butterfly effect, if you want. But I mean, just imagine if, in fact, evolution were the case, then we would have house flies that had developed some resistance against these things by this point. 
You know, they have quick enough generations. There's enough of an advantage to being uh, fly swatter immune that they would have, uh, you know, we have, it wouldn't, <laughs> species would adapt to us, right? They, they'd evolve. We put lots of pressure on lots of species. You know, the hum, human beings impact the, the natural world more than anything imaginable. And yet, why aren't these species evolving to to compete against us more successfully? Why aren't other species developing intelligence so that they can defeat us at our own game? True. You've seen the mosquito get faster over time. Are you sure that <laughs> some population of faster mosquitoes didn't move into your area? I mean, it could be a different species of mosquito. Anime tells us the power of friendship can overcome anything. Aw, true. And that's a good point, Angantir. Maybe each species evolved to a certain point and then stop. That was the idea of punctuated equilibrium. Anime also tells us that um, duty is heavier than a mountain and death is lighter than a feather. That's good to know. It's the Japanese saying. What? No wonder there's, there's no wonder these people are so fucked up, you know? Yeah. No. They also, I don't know. There's a hold on. I don't know if it's Japanese. I'm gonna look it up. It's actually true that a global flood occurred. Well, I don't doubt it. At some point there was um that big meteor that hit into the Gulf of Mexico and that had to just tidal wave the hell out of everything, you know. You gotta figure it. Talk about some Korean. Talk about some tidal waves. Woof. You dump a big ass meteor like the size of a school bus or something into the Gulf of Mexico at however many thousands of miles an hour it's traveling. And you are going to see some high quality surfing. Those are gonna be some waves. <sighs> This movie gets such good. Have you seen the movie Old Boy? Uh -oh. Speaking of boy, though, should we broach the subject? Rachel and I did watch Cabin Boy yesterday. I want to see who's seen it. Has anybody here seen Cabin Boy? You know, I actually feel so bad. I read an article about the they will ne they said they they will never work together again. Really? Like the director and and uh huh and that like if you mention Cabin Boy to either of them they really like don't like it. Really? Yeah. Huh. It's got this like hex on it. It's not like <laughs> it really like well, yeah. You hated it basically. Yeah. Um and I kind of loved it, but only I, I mean I don't think I understand. I think I think I would have liked it a lot less. If I hadn't been watching it with you, yeah, and getting your just general <laughs> disgust, <laughs> Effie, me, your, like, your you Effie disgust made me face. made me think it was more fun. Than something. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know why. But Probably. I mean, <laughs> but I was commentating. Like it, I was commentating. Like it, the whole thing seemed more funny because every time they were getting just more ridiculous, I was like, Rachel's not gonna <laughs> like this. <laughs> and I would say something. Either my face would say it or my mouth. If it was really bad, my mouth was saying something. If it was, if it was like I don't want to ruin shit, I kept my face to uh, the the feeling I was feeling about it. Okay, mosquitoes may be becoming more resistant to poisons. I don't doubt that. That seems like a slow adaptation of a species to a persistent environmental uh, pressure. However, note what they're not doing. They're not um, learning to uh, dis to develop their own poison packs to fight back or something. You know, they're, they're not, they're not changing from mosquitoes. They're just becoming slightly adapted mosquitoes. And that's all they ever did. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that you like that. How much I disliked something. You're so used to me liking stuff. I'm sure it was like. You know, I had a sort of a teenage boy um, giddiness about a girl getting a frog on her or something. Like, I, I, well, you know how, like, in, I guess it's more, more like elementary school. Like, if a boy likes a girl, he'll, like, put a frog on her and she'll go, eee! That's definitely, like, So I, I was getting a little bit of that 
giddiness of like of like <laughs> the girl being the girl being like grossed out by this ridiculous boy movie. You know, it's such oh, a boy it is, movie. It is. It well, is totally it was too, not. It was girl. a vanity project. <laughs> Total vanity project by two friends who just the set is horrible. I mean, it's really just. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. <laughs> we, we've seen parts of it. I've seen parts I've of it. I've seen the room. I think it's funny. It's, it was so bad, it's funny. Well, I mean, it's like it's like that thing we saw by the other guy, too. Uh, what mm -hmm. was it called? Um, oh, yeah. Final, final <laughs> Findings? <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen Final Findings, <laughs> That's funny. you really want to check that one out. That is a hell of a movie. Um... <laughs> no, Final Findings, I think, is made by an ISTJ doing his best, I believe. But maybe Final maybe findings. ISFP doing his best? I don't know. <laughs> I did not. I did not hit her. I did not. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. You know, it took them like 72 takes for that, just those two lines. <laughs> Three lines. Okay, well, but it might make sense for them to develop some sort of sleeping potion that makes us fall asleep, and then they can all come and get on us or something. Who? Mosquitoes. Oh. Um, I don't know where species diversity originated from, Jason Blood. That's the point. And if you say you still think species evolve from other species, but you don't have the mechanism, well... To say they evolve is to say you have a mechanism by which they change over time. So it's not <laughs> you're saying I believe they, oh. they change over time by a mechanism. I just don't know what the mechanism is. Well, then you don't what you that's not what you believe then. You just arbitrarily believe they change over time for no reason. Uh, give me some examples, Morage. I mean, there have been claims that somebody uh, speciated a virus. I mean, the thing is, they've been trying since Darwin. Nobody's actually done it. There's a claim that by non-reproductive means and with a bunch of tweaking, they've managed to successfully create a new species of virus. But that doesn't explain anything. Tommy was a perfectionist. That would be a negative impact on their food and cause us to detect and take measures against them. Well, that's assuming they, their genes can think that far ahead, you know, anthrax. Um, but yeah, I really want to recommend finding, final findings. Final findings, maybe... It's like that guy, he's, I respect him more than Tommy Wiseau because he's doing all these films on a relatively low budget, obviously. Whereas Tommy yeah, Wiseau is wasted it. a bunch of money on Yeah, yeah. They don't, they, and no one knows <coughs> where the money came from. He never <coughs> talked about the money. <coughs> Well, he had it. He knew what he wanted to spend it on. Moved, yeah. You know, more power to him, I guess. Yeah. It's like, at least he did. Hey, at least he doesn't have an INTP's problem. INTP has that $2 million, and they just nest Sit up and it. don't ever do anything. Yeah. Like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're right. At least he went out and he, he made something. And in fact, it turned out to be an incredibly memorable thing that everybody talks about. Yeah. So good for him. <laughs> I know, I know. The final findings guy, he seems <laughs> like Tommy Wizard, you can tell he's got like, he's like FE8 or something, maybe he's an ESTJ. Maybe. Um, but uh, there's a good chance of that. He has to take that many takes. The final findings guy, you can tell he's FE polar. <laughs> so it's, it's like extra kind of adorable. I, I don't think we've ever watched that okay. together. Well, we'll have to. Things. We haven't watched the whole thing, but I'll, I'll, I just we just watched some highlights from it. Here, I'm gonna mute this briefly. If you guys don't mind chatting with yourselves, I want to share virtual something without getting in trouble with YouTube.
It's called fateful findings, not final findings. Okay, it's called fateful findings. And the guy who made it, his name is. <laughs> I forget what his name is, but if you just there's a movie called there's a, a video called Worst Acting Ever, Fateful Findings Best Scenes. Oh my gosh, so definitely has to check that out. We're gonna watch that right now. <laughs> okay, now now we can. Finding, oh no. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't watch any more of this. You gotta be kidding me. 
I like. I like. No. <laughs> you look so weird. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> fine movie. It really is. I've never seen it with you. You've never seen it? No. I, we've just seen that before. I, we've seen clips, because like yeah, I know that, that guy's... That's the only thing I know I've that seen guy's face. is that video, which is the, the, the best scene. It's like 20 minutes of the best scene. <laughs> How long is the movie? I, I don't know, <laughs> but it's it's really it's really quite a, a piece of work. Um... I'll add it to my watch later. <laughs> to this day, nobody knows how Jim could have done this. <laughs> One of the comments says there. <laughs> how could he have done this? How could Jim have killed himself? I just don't get it. How could he have done it? How? Why? I've never seen it. Oh my god. Well, the most interesting thing about that movie is it's a movie in which he finds out all these secrets about the government that blow everyone's mind, right? Mm -hmm. Except he never says what they are. <laughs> he just says, "Well, I found out secrets," and then and then the people go, "The secrets he's found out, they've blown my mind." But nobody says what they are. Really? Yeah. So weird. How could Jim have killed himself? I can't believe it. I, it's not like him at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, I just, uh, what well, is someone who's argumentative like me trying to calm down so I don't waste my energy on people and I don't get a freaking heart attack? Uh, um, so what I do is, in the middle of arguing about evolution, I'll just start getting distracted by something else and watch it. <laughs> You know, like that, kind of. That's the best way to do it. Okay, I'm going to go now. Thanks for being here, everybody. Remember, you are loved. <laughs>